Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Dom from Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals and welcome back to the channel. In this week's video, I'm gonna be reviewing a pretty impressive lens from DZO Film. It's the 35 millimeter T2.1 Vespid Prime. Now this 35 millimeter Vespid Prime is a pretty modest sized lens for its speed and build quality, right? And then you figure out that this can illuminate a full frame sensor and then its size becomes a lot more impressive. So in this video, I'm gonna break down the build of this lens quickly and then I'm gonna test for a lot of the major characteristics of this lens so we can see what this thing is all about. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at this thing on a physical level. Now I only have the 35 millimeter from this set, but if you had the whole entire set in front of you, I'd think you'd notice that they all have a nice solid build quality. They're in a sleek metal housing, good resistance on the focus and iris rings, and all have a very friendly size and weight. This lens being less than three and a half inches long and weighs less than two pounds. All the lenses in this Vespid set have an exterior diameter of 80 millimeters, but the thread inside is a 77 millimeter, which is a nice common thread size. The focus ring is nice and resistant, like I said earlier, and its total focus throw is 200 170 degrees. All the lenses in this set stop down to T22 and open up to T2.1 with the exception of the 90 millimeter macro which is 2.8. Speaking of the iris, the diaphragm in this thing is made up of 16 aperture blades, which produces a very smooth bokeh and out of focus area, which we'll see for ourselves in a second. These lenses also have excellent close focus distances, this 35 millimeter being able to close focus 12 inches from the image plane, which is about eight and a half inches off the lens. And last thing about optics before I roll some of these tests and you can actually see the characteristics for yourself, but these lenses claim to fame is full frame illumination. And that's advertised in a couple of different places around this lens, like on the top here where it says image circle 46.5 millimeter, and also down here with this double V logo, which I think means that it will cover super 35 millimeter Vista Vision formats as well. Which reminds me, let's take a second to appreciate this rear element, super huge, obviously allowing for that full frame illumination, but you may notice that there's no gasket for weather sealing around the mount here, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Finally, just some other aesthetic features of this lens. All of the markings are in this neon yellow print, including this Vespid Prime at the top. And also you get the brand name and focal length on each side here in white with that VistaVision emblem below. And I don't have all the lenses in this set. I just have the 35, like I said, but from the research that I've done, it seems like all of the lenses in the set work pretty uniformly optically speaking, as well as build and operation wise too. Okay, so now I'm gonna roll some test video that I was able to get with this lens. And I should say that every single one of these test shots was shot on the C500 Mark II in its cinema raw light recording mode. And that way I was able to use the camera's entire sensor area. And that's going to be essential for testing the characteristic of this lens from corner to corner. Okay, so we'll start on our Edmonds resolution chart to look at some more clinical optics stuff like overall sharpness, barrel distortion, and chromatic aberration. So this is at T2.1, and I'm very pleased with the sharpness from corner to corner. You'll definitely see that there's some vertical chromatic aberration going on there that's pretty magenta heavy, with barely any green on the other side. When I dropped down to T4, the image for sure sharpened up a bit and gained a bit of contrast too. The chrome ab is also a bit more subdued at T4, although I feel as though I'm noticing it more because it's sharper. Speaking of chrome ab, I also wanted to test the longitudinal chromatic aberration, which is certainly present in this lens, but that's okay because that's very, very common. This isn't a standard distortion chart, but you can kind of get the gist here. Distortion wise, the 35 millimeter is really minimal with only the slightest bit of barrel distortion that I can notice, but 35 millimeters isn't usually a problematic focal length. I'd be curious to see the 25 millimeter though. All right, although this next test is kind of busy looking, I think it's a great showcase of a lot of this lens's characteristics. But these were all wide open T2.1 shots. So afterwards, I'll show how stopping down affects the traits of this lens too. Here I have a mannequin head about two feet from the camera with some string lights on the backdrop a string of lights coming from the backdrop to the close focus distance, and at the close focus distance, I have this film canister. 
Also, those blue bokehs on the left of the frame there are lights taped basically right to the lens barrel. And finally, that hard source to the right is just an Aperture 300D at a pretty low intensity. So as for the bokeh and out of focus area wide open, I think you'll find that the bokeh this lens produces are nice and smooth and uniform and perfectly spherical as long as they aren't way over at the edge. Towards the edge, they do get a little ovular and lose their shape a bit, but not by much. Other than that, nothing really special or weird going on. The edge is clean, no onion ring or weird sharpness going on there, and no weird shapes going on either as long as you're near the center. I love full frame shooting because you can achieve large, rich bokehs like this much more easily, especially in a small space. As for flaring and ghosting, this is also not a huge factor on this lens. I don't know much about how the elements of this lens are coated, but the main lens flare is a bit warm and has a few greenish cyan orbs opposite the source. And the beam is visible too, but not very distracting at all. As you can see right here, when the source is just outside of the frame, it lets off one little magenta flare in the corner here. And when a significant lens flare does happen that sort of envelops the whole image, it certainly loses some contrast and clarity, and it warms everything up a touch too. Now here's a more simple test to see how the bokeh is maintained when stopping down. And you can see that pretty much any funky stuff that was going on at 2.1 is going to be totally gone by the time you get to 2.8. Those bokehs that get cut off all the way in the corner become whole again and perfectly spherical. And as you get all the way down to T22, you notice that the bokehs hardly ever form into hard geometries, mostly just nice even circles, which is thanks to the many aperture blades in the diaphragm of this lens. Speaking of being all the way stopped down, here's a quick shot pointed right at the sun, and you can see that this lens has a really neat starburst lens flare at T22. This lens also maintains focus breathing very well. What little movement there is, is very controlled and minimal. In color rendition, this lens is very neutral, as well as in its contrast. Nothing really stood out to me with this lens in those two areas. It's just a really true lens. It can definitely pick up on some subtle, natural contrasts given the right lighting, and it seems to deal with those delicate color spectrums like green and magenta fairly well when you go to deal with those in post. Okay, so that's pretty much gonna wrap it up on this video, reviewing the 35 millimeter T2.1 Vespid Prime from DZO Film. So, as always, if you have any questions, comments, or insights about this lens, drop a comment in the comment section below and we'll start a discussion. Also, while you're down there, if you happen to like this video, hit it with a thumbs up button down there to let me know you liked it. And finally, if you're not already, subscribe to the channel. And if you are subscribed, you can hit that little bell button down there too to be notified whenever we post new content, which is every week. So take care, and we'll see you in the next one.